In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Welcome back, everybody, to the Coptic class. I hope you had a, a great week. <clears throat> we'll start by our Coptic lesson. And um, I would like some volunteers, like we did last time, um, to, <clears throat> um, to do the, um, the letters with us. Okay, Thomas, if you would do the first um, uh, the first slide here, just have to say like the letter and the pronunciation, like alpha A, like that. Okay. Go alpha ahead. sounds like an A. Vita can sound like a V or a D. Ig can sound like an sounds like an E, and Vita can sound like a Z. Very good. All right. Um, Sue, can you do the next one? Uh, I, Yota, Yota, I, yes, Kappa, K, yes, my, M, May, M, good, Nay, M, very good, thank you, okay, um, Mina, you want to do the next one? Mina, are you there? Okay, uh, says George, can you do the next uh, one? Yes, uh, I'll go get on here, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Mina. Sorry, I was, I was running my phone. <laughs> so uh, so we have O, say long and O, pronounce long and O, then M, not, Sama, say long and C, pronounce as an S, example is city, Tav, Say long of D, pronounce long of D, example is dust, and then ooh, um, when it's say long of W, and pronouncing it is uh, Owa, and example is the board. Good. So ooh, ooh is like, like an OA, like a long O sound, and like a board. Very good. Thank you, Mina. Okay. Uh, Stas George, do you want to do the next one? Okay, um, Ramon. The Ita, it, it's shaped like an H, and it's you pronounce it as double E. Yes, good. Examples feet. Good. The next letter was roll. It looks like a P. Pronounce late. The pronunciation is R, and it's like R of for road. Good. And the next one was K. It looks key. like key. It looks like the letter X, and it's K in some Greek words. It's S H. K-H. Good. K, and in some Greek words, sh or sh, or ch, like, like the ch sound. Good. Thank you. Okay, next, Mimi, do you want to try the next one? I just joined, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, Valerie, do you want to do the next one? It's okay. Uh, so, uh, the first one is gamma. It looks like an S with like a little extra on the top. It's um. One of these is an, sounds like an Arabic letter. Yeah, it's a G or or the Arabic G. letter the G. Yeah. yeah, or this is pronounced G. Like this this letter is pronounced like this. Okay. okay. How do you say? How do you say? Yeah. Good. The next one. The next one is delta, which is like a delta or triangle. 
and it's pronounced like a D or a Z. Good, good. And then the third one is Lavla. Lola. Lola or Lavla, good. Yeah. And it looks like. Depends on one. I don't know. This looks like, like a triangle without the bottom part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's pronounced like an L. Good, good job. All right. Um, Noah, you want to do this one? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, what, which one? First letter. Okay, it's P. It's shaped like sort of like a bridge. Or Mm -hmm. it pronunciation of P. Good. Um, sample is Payot. Good. Very good. Yes. Next one. Um, um, can my brother do it? Sure. Um, it's Hori. It's shaped like an S. The pronunciation is H as in house. And the example is Na Narin. Nahrin. Nahrin. Very good. And can you do the last one? Jaina. Jinja. Jinja. Mm -hmm. The pronunciation is G as in go or J as in joy, if followed by an E. And I don't remember that letter. Yota. 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 Ita. Ita. Mm -hmm. And the example is. Uh, Agb. Agb. Ag. Ag. Yes. Or. The, or G. 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 Or G. Good job. Thank you. All right. So we'll learn a few new letters today. So the first letter, it's called shy. It's called shy. It looks like a W with like a tail underneath it. Okay. So it's like a W, the O with a, with a tail underneath it. Or like for those who know the Arabic uh, letters, you know, the, the sheen. You know, it looks like that, but has like three dots on it. So maybe this is a way you can you can remember it. So shy is pronounced like sh, 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 like like this word shy, which means feast. Remember when we learned how to say happy feast, we said no free shy. So shy is feast. So this is shy. It's like a W with like a tail underneath. The next letter <clears throat> is called theta. It's called theta. It looks like an O with, with a dash inside of it. If you're familiar with um, some of the higher math, you have theta. This is used in, in like trigonometry. Uh, in Greek, it's called theta. In Coptic, it's called theta. This is pronounced like a TH most of the time, TH, like the TH in think, TH. Like example here, thigh, thigh. So theta. Alpha, yota, thai. Thai, which means this, like you point to something and you say thai. Sometimes theta is pronounced like a T. If it follows one of these letters, this letter we didn't take yet, it's called epsilon. Um, this is T, this is me, and this is sima. So if we have um, one of these letters before theta, that means theta follows one of these letters, then it's a T. Like this word here, aspa, Aspa, alpha, sima, p, alpha, aspa, zis, te, zis, te. Okay, so here the theta is like a t. Aspa, aspa, zis, te, which means greed. We hear this in the church, um, you know, the, the response of the deacon that says, uh, greet one another with a holy kiss. We say, aspa, zis, te, allelus, infilumeti. Aspa, zis, te, which means greed. Okay. And then the last letter we'll learn today, it's called phi. It's called phi. It looks like a circle 
with like a cross in it. You can see it here easier, but this is a you know a nicer way. So like you draw a circle and then you put a cross inside of it. So this is phi, phi. It's like the pH sound, like the soft F, the pH, like when you say phone. So here we have fairy, 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 which means new. Like we say in the liturgy in Zayasiki and fairy, uh, the new covenant. Fairy, so this is phi, this is the pH. Okay, so let's read some easy words. Raise your hand to volunteer. Gloria, nice to see you with us today, Gloria. We missed you for the past couple of weeks. Thank you. Um, Pashons. Excellent. Pashons. Pashons. Here, this is the new letter we learned today, the Shai. Pashons. Pashons is a Coptic month, a Coptic month of Pashons. Uh, the, the feast of the Lord's entry into Egypt is on the 24 of Pashons. Is Philo with you, Gloria? Yes. Philo, do you want to do the next one? Sh Shobra. Excellent. Shobra. Shobra, yeah. In Arabic, it became Shobra because remember I told you in Arabic, there is no P. It's only like a soft B. Uh, th that's why, for example, sometimes um, you hear people say something like, um, uh, bol instead of Paul, right? Because the P is not uh, really available in, in the Arabic um, alphabet. So it becomes like a B. So Shopra became Shobra in, in Arabic, the, the pronunciation. Okay, good. All right, next one. Thomas, you want to do this one? It's a little long, yes. but just break it like that and you'll be able to see, to, to say it. Uh, Athanasius. Excellent. Athanasius. Athanasius. Very good. Athanasius. Pope Athanasius. All right. Ramon, can you do the next one? Uh, Just break it down like this again. And if you're stuck on a letter, I'll help you. Excellent. Rol Rotha. Rol Rotha. Rol Rotha. It, in English, it became Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, Golgotha. Why is it called the place of the skull? You know, the Lord was crucified on Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull. Whose skull? Adam's skull. So when the Lord was crucified, he was crucified on top of the place where Adam was buried. So now we have the new Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, on top. His blood goes down and saves the old Adam, the one who sinned and uh, needed salvation. And all of us through him, we also needed salvation. So this is why it's called Golgotha, the place of the skull. All right. I have a um, question. Yes. Wasn't it called Golgotha because there's a skull-like thing carved into it? Like wasn't carved, but it looked like a skull. So why is it, again, why is it, why is there a skull carved or whatever? It's because this is, according to tradition, this is the place where Adam was buried. So it's the okay. place of the skull of Adam. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay, the next one. Uh, let's see who hasn't had a, Noah? Seraphim. Very good. Seraphim. Seraphim, which are the seraphim, the, the, the rank of angels that serve before God and they have six wings. Seraphim. Can you do the next one? Sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is also the pH. Yeah. Fa. Uh, Fa. La. Fa. La. Fa. La. Fa. Yes, good. Falafel. You know the falafel, right? The, the, the vegetable patty that we eat during the fast. 
falafel is a skeptic. So now you, you know that falafel is a Coptic word. It means full of beans because actually falafel is made out of beans. So falafel means full of beans. Good job. Okay, next, let's see. Um, Heidi? Oh, Philippus. Good. Philippus. Philippus is Philip. If you know somebody whose name is Philip in Coptic, it's Philippus. Okay. Uh, next, um, let's see. Mina, do you want to do this? Sure. Um, um, so this one is. This is the Lola, the L. Yeah, left. 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 When it's followed by vowel. Let me think. Um, so um, L E, and then this is a V and T. Yeah. So it's what? Left. Left. Very good. Left. In Arabic, it's left, which is the beats. Good job. Okay, the next one. Uh, let's see. Mimi, do you want to do the next one? Okay, I'll try. La Akna. La Akna. La Ka. And then this is N, and this is the long E or two E's. La Akni. La Kani. La Kani. Lakani, good. Lakani is the Lakan, you know, the liturgy of the waters that we pray in the church. Lakani. Who knows how many times we pray the liturgy of the water, the Lakan in the church? How many times? Three. Um, three times. Very good. We pray it. The book can say when. Of course, the, the person who says three knows, but somebody else. I do. Go ahead. Uh like the time whenever like Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Good. That's the, the Holy Thursday. That's one. And then a, another very easy one that has to do with Jesus and the water. Um, maybe when he got baptized. Exactly. Yes. In the Feast of the Epiphany. And then the third one, this is the, the more difficult one. Stas George, do you, can you say it? Yeah, yeah Apostolus uh, Feast. Uh, feast. Yes. So that's the three times in the, 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 the Feast of the Epiphany, when Jesus was baptized, in the Feast of uh, Holy Thursday, when Jesus watch, washed the disciples' feet, and then in the Feast of the Apostles. Good job. Okay, let's read some more. Um, Let's uh, have a few more people try. Okay, so people who haven't tried yet, I'll try to pick on you. Nether, can you say the first one? Um, is it uh, femt? This is an a, a, a U, like an O, not an M. Fiot. Fiot, good. Which means the father. Yot means father. If means the. So if Yot is the father. Like we say, Chenevran, M if Yot. In the name of the Father. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, let's see. Salwa, want to do the next one? Ipshiri. Ipshiri, good. Ipshiri means the sun. Okay, Siham, you want to do the next one? Etries. Good, Etries, which means Trinity. Good job. Uh, Sue, you want to do the next one? Sherry. Share, good. Share, which means hail, like share name Maria, hail to Mary. Okay, let's see who, who else hasn't had that chance. Says Bahir, do you want to do one? Okay, uh, Ferris, you want to do one? Ekliseya. Ekekliseya. Ekek, because we have two Ks here, so it's Ekekliseya. Good job, Ekekliseya. Okay, uh, let's see. Did we miss anybody? Uh, okay, we'll go back to Gloria. Um, the last one. Yes. Okay. Um, ip e. 
Good. Ep e the house. Ep e. All right. Um, Philo, you want to do the next one? Um, Parthenos. Good job. Parthenos, the version. Parthenos. Noah, you want to do the next one? Oh. Etas Mets. Excellent. Etas Mets, which means who bore. And then the last one, let's see, Thomas. I have my brother with me. Stop. Go ahead, Christopher. Finn? Yeah. Finn? So? That's a T. T. That's an R. Pensotir, pen good job. Pensotir, Pensotir. Sotir is savior, pen is our. So Pensotir is our savior. Very good job, guys. Okay, so these are the three letters that we learned today. We learned shy, which looks like an, a, a W or an U with a tail underneath it. It's pronounced sh, S-H, like the word shy. Theta or theta, which looks like an O with, with a dash inside of it. This is most of the time TH, like thigh, and sometimes it's a T if it comes um, uh, after one of these letters here. So like aspaziste, aspaziste. And then we learned phi, which is like a circle with a cross inside of it. This is the PH sound like fairy. Good. Any questions about the Coptic before we move on? Um, Bridget, a great question. If yes, you don't sir. mind. So. I'm looking at thigh, which means this. But in the hymn that we sing, with is with is thigh sorry. Yes, the word yes. Th 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 the word thigh means this. So my question is, what is what is what is the difference? Yes, between, that's a good... between between thigh and thigh. Yeah, because yeah. to me, those two are similar to each other. Yes, yes. We will learn about this when we learn about the genders. So Coptic is a gender language. And so there is masculine and feminine nouns. So thai and thai is gonna depend on what the noun after it is, whether it's going to be masculine or feminine. But you're right, thai means this and thai also means this. Good, good question. We'll learn about okay. that later. Okay. All right, great. So let us, um, we started last week uh, talking about the, the history of the Old Testament. So I will review this timeline quickly and then we will uh, uh, dive a little bit into like the, the first time period. So we said that the creation happened around four, at least 4,000 years before Christ. And then after that, the, the next major event was the flood. We'll talk a little bit more about that today in the time of Noah. And then the promises began with the patriarchs. And we said the three major patriarchs are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Uh, Jacob is Israel. Israel had 12 sons. One of them is Joseph. We know the story of Joseph when um, his brothers sold him. And um, uh, he was sent to Egypt and he was in prison there. Then he became uh, very powerful because he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. And he became basically the second man in the land. And he saved basically the whole world. So Joseph is, of course, a very clear uh, type of the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. So this was all around the year, you know, 2000 BC, 1900 BC. They were in Egypt until uh, about 1400 BC, the time of Moses. And Moses, um, after the, the Israelites were in Egypt for, for so long, then they became slaves to the Egyptians and they cried out to God. God sent them Moses and Moses took them out of the land of Egypt and he brought them back to the land that God told Abraham to go and stay in the promised land. Moses took them all the way to like the boundary of the land and then he died and then Joshua his disciple brought them into the promised land this is about 400 
uh, years before Christ, 1400 years before Christ. After Joshua brought them in and he, they settled into the land and, and Joshua was the first judge, like the governor or the judge for the people of Israel. After that, um, many judges were uh, appointed. Um, among them, some of the famous ones we know, like Samson, the judge, like Gideon, the judge. Um, and Sam, Samuel was the last judge to rule or to judge for Israel. Samuel, when he was uh, towards the end of his life, when he grew uh, old, the people did not want his children to be judges over them because his children were not uh, upright. They were not walking in the way of God and they were not walking in righteousness like Samuel was. And so they said, we want a king. And Samuel told them, it's, this is not a good thing that you're asking. You're basically rejecting um, God as, as your king. And they still said, we don't care. We want the king like all the other nations that have kings. And so Samuel uh, anointed the first king. So Samuel, is there a question? Yes, I have one. Go ahead. So if he said Joshua was the first judge, but like how like in the but like how come Samuel is like some people also kind of consider Samuel as the first judge too? No, like, Samuel Samuel is the last judge, oh. but he's the first prophet. Oh. Okay. okay. So so Samuel was the first was the last judge. Um, but he's considered the first prophet from, for the time of the prophets. There were some prophets before him, even like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they, they spoke some prophecies. Um, Moses, of course, was an arch prophet. But the time of the prophets began with Samuel, as did the time of the kings. Okay? Okay, thanks. Um, somebody's asking, are these dates the time that they died or when they were born? These dates are the time when they were born or when they started to, uh, to leave. And these are approximate dates. They're not exact dates uh, as well. So Saul was anointed as the first king. Saul, at the beginning, he was good and he listened to God. And then eventually he um, uh, left God and started to do things his own way. And so God rejected him. And God appointed and, and, uh, and Samuel anointed David as king after him. David was a great king. He's the greatest king that uh, the nation of Israel ever had. And until, they, until now, they, they consider themselves sons of David. David is their king. David ha had a son. His name is Solomon. He was the wisest man uh, who ever lived. And Solomon, up until... Solomon, the, the, the nation was one. So all the 12 tribes were one, were united. So under Saul, David, and Solomon, the, the nation was one nation. After Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king. Rehoboam was the opposite of his father. His father was very wise. Rehoboam was very foolish. And he wanted to treat the people badly. So the people left him. So 10 tribes left the tribe of Judah, where Rehoboam was king. And so they formed the Northern Kingdom, which is the Kingdom of Israel. Under another man, his, his name is Jeroboam. Rehoboam is the son of uh, Solomon. He rules in the South. And it had two um, tribes, Judah and Benjamin. In the North, there were 10 tribes. Then became, began the, the, the time of the kings. So there was always two kings, right? There was a king in Israel, and there was a king in Judah. These two kings very rarely were friendly with each other. Most of the time they were against each other. And so the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom were almost always at war with each other. All of the Northern Kings were all evil, every single one of them. They were far away from the temple. The temple was in the South in Jerusalem, in the, in, in the area of Judah. And so they, they started to tell the people, you don't have to go to Jerusalem, we'll set up a temple here. And they started to worship idols and things like that. And so they led the people astray. All of them were evil. The kings of the south in Judah, most of them were evil, but every, every you know, few uh, kings, uh, a good king would rise. 
the king, the kingdom of the north, Israel, which is also called Samaria because its capital was Samaria, was captured and destroyed by the Assyrians around the year 700 BC. Um, the, the, the Assyrian king tried to also capture the south, which is Jerusalem, but he couldn't because the, the, the king of Jerusalem, his name was uh, Hezekiah. He was a good king. He cried out to God, so God delivered him. After the Assyrians um, collapsed, then the Babylonians <clears throat> came and, and, and took over them. And the Babylonians were able to invade um, Jerusalem, and they took all of the people captive to Babylon. After 70 years, seven zero, 70 years, um, there rose another king. Um, his name was Cyrus, and this was not the Babylonians, but the Persians. Okay, so now we have three kingdoms. First, the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, then the Persians. After the Persians were the Greeks, and after the Greeks were the Romans, and that's when the Lord Jesus Christ was born. So during the Persian rule, King Cyrus rose and, and God moved him so that he allowed the Jews to return back to Jerusalem. The Jews in the, in the north who were taken captives, they never returned back. Only some of the evil and, and poor and criminals remained in the north. But in the south, King Cyrus allowed the people to return back to Jerusalem. And they returned back in two waves. The first wave was uh, under Ezra, uh, the scribe, and he um, helped rebuild the temple. And then the second wave under Nehemiah and he helped rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Um, the last prophecy that was written <clears throat> is the prophecy of Malachi. And after the prophecy of Malachi for 400 years, there was no prophecies, there was no visions, there was no communication between heaven and earth. And we call this the silent years, okay? And then Christ was born. So approximate major milestones, Adam, at least 4,000 years before Christ, Noah 3,000 years, Abraham about 2,000 years, Moses about 1,500, David about 1,000. These are approximate, just for us to, uh, need to be e easy to remember. The, the exile about 500 years before Christ, Malachi, the last prophet 400 years, and then the 400 silent years. When were the Old Testament um, books written. The, the slide is a little bit off. I don't know why, um, but oops. Um, so here, this, is, this says um, uh, Genesis and Job. Job actually is the first book to be written because Job lived at the time of Abraham, the, Abraham and Isaac. So even though Genesis is the first book of the Bible because it begins and talks to us about the creation and everything like that, Genesis was written by Moses. Moses was after the time of Abraham. So Job is actually the oldest book in the Bible. But we can say, you know, Job and Genesis were the first two books. And then we have Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These are the five books of Moses. After that, we have the book of Joshua, and then we have the book of the Judges, and the book of Ruth is at the same time as the book of Judges. Then we begin the time of the prophets and the kings. So first we have 1 Samuel, and 2 Samuel, and then 1 Kings and 2 Kings. And then after that, we have 1 and 2 Chronicles. But 1 and 2 Chronicles, they go around the same time as you know, the books of Samuel and the books of the kings. Um, the first Samuel is uh, focused more on Saul. Second Samuel is focused on the, the reign of King David. Um, and then first Kings begins you know, uh, at the time of Solomon. King David, of course, he's the one who wrote the Psalms. So the Psalms were written during his time. Solomon wrote five, uh, sorry, he wrote three books. He wrote the, actually he wrote four books but three that are in the, in the Protestant version that we have in our hands, the King James Version. That's the Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, and Song of Solomon. But there's a fourth book called the Wisdom, and that's by Solomon also. Um, and then, as we said, you know, the, 
the northern and the southern kingdom uh, were, um, uh, you know, separated at the time of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Um, and then we have the 70 years of captivity. And then the return from the exile, we have the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther is at the same time as Ezra, because Esther, um, the king um, uh, Ashawirish or Artaxerxes, he is a, he's a Persian king. So he was at, at the time <clears throat> um, before Cyrus, or at the same time, right uh, before, uh, right after King Cyrus, sorry, um, allowed the Jews to, to return back. Um, the prophecies, we'll talk a little bit more about these later on, but the prophecies also, so all of these books down here are the historical books. The prophetic books, we have the, 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 the prophecy of Amos and Hosea, only these two are addressing the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. Most of the books of the prophecies address the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. So Joel, Micah, Isaiah. Zephaniah, Habakkuk, and Jeremiah. Jeremiah was the last one before the captivity of the Babylonians. Jeremiah told the people that God has basically deserted you because you are so evil, and the Babylonians will come and capture the city. And he actually told the people, do not fight them because you cannot win, because God already gave them the city, so you cannot fight them. The people um, did not like this, and they actually said, Jeremiah, you must be working with the enemy. And they took him and they put him in prison. And then, of course, what Jeremiah prophesied happened and the city fell. And then he wrote the book of the Lamentations of Jeremiah when Jerusalem was, was taken. There are some prophecies that were written to foreign nations, like the Jonah, which was written to um, um, Nineveh, uh, Nahum, Nahum, and Obadiah. And then the two books that were written during the exile, during the 70 years, are Daniel and Ezekiel. Daniel was taken among the people, and so was Ezekiel, um, uh, to Babylon. And then after they returned, the two books, the three books, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. I told you Malachi is the very last book of the Old Testament. And the very last word of the very last book of the Old Testament ends or says curse. If you, if you open the book of uh, Malachi and you look at the last chapter, the last word, it's curse. So what does this mean? It means that everything in the Old Testament could not save us. All the prophecies, all the sacrifices, all the feasts, all the rites, everything in the Old Testament was not able to give us salvation, but instead it brought us all the way to a curse. Why? because only through Jesus can we be saved. So if you open the New Testament and the very first word in the book of Matthew, the book of life of Jesus Christ. So the Old Testament ends with a curse. The New Testament begins with life. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at um, the, um, <clears throat> we can break the historical period just, yani kida. Uh, we have the creation and the fall. This is the first period. Then we have the patriarchs, like we said. We have Moses and the Exodus, Joshua and the conquest, the judges and uh, Samuel, David and Solomon. This is during the time of the uh, United Kingdom. And then we have the divided kingdom. Then we have the destruction of Israel and Judah. And then we have the return from captivity of the South. And then we have the 400 silent years. So let's just take a, a quick look at the first period, which, which is the creation and the fall. The main events are the creation, first of all. Um, so this is the creation of everything. Creation of heaven, creation of earth, the creation of all the living things, including the creation of man. God created everything in six days and rested on the seventh day to establish the Sabbath day. Now. When we say God created everything in six days, do we mean six 24-hour days? What do you think? Yes or no? No. 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 Two reasons. Number one, with God is not under time. 
God is not under the influence of time like we humans are. And as it says, a thousand years is like one day and one day is like a thousand years with God. So when, when it says that God created on the first day, this means the first period. This first day could be millions of years, could be billions of years, okay? That's the first, the, the first reason. The second reason, um, we, cal we calculate you know, the, 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 the day, the 24 hour days because of the sun. So how do we do this? So if we are, for example, in Texas, and let's say that the sun shines at seven o'clock in the morning, okay? So this is when we see the sun rays, you know, reaching the earth, reaching the place where we live. As you know, that, that the earth uh, um, rotates around itself, right? It has a, a rotation. So the sun is, is stationary, it doesn't move, but the earth is the one that moves. So as the earth moves, then we, 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 you know, the, we get more intense sunlight. And then in the evening, as we move further away from, from the, the shining of the sun, it gets dark. Until the, the sun shines again, so until we do a complete rotation, this is 20, it's calculated to be 24 hours. So in order to do this calculation, what do you need? What is, what is the most important thing that you need to do this calculation? The sun. The sun. The sun was not created until the fourth day. So even if, we, if some people try to say, well, I still think it's 24 hours. So at least the first four days were not 24 hours because the sun was not even there, okay? So God created every, everything in six periods, okay? And then he rested on the seventh period. This seventh day or this seventh period lasted from the creation of Adam because Adam was, was the, the, you know, the, the last creation until the cross. All of this is the seventh day. Again, God created everything in six days. Adam was the last of his creation. So that's the end of the sixth day or the sixth period. Then he rested. This rest or this Sabbath or this seventh day began after the creation of Adam all the way until the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. All of this is the seventh day. When the Lord rose from the dead on Sunday, he began the eighth day. You know, the week is seven days. So if we have an eighth day, this means what? It's a new week. So we begin a new period. So we are today, we are living in the eighth day. The eighth day will continue until the second coming. And then this will be the end. And then this be, will begin eternal life. Okay. Any questions about this? Good. Yes. I do. Go ahead. Um, my question was, can we use the fact that, um, that a day was from the, from when Adam was created to when Jesus died as a way to calculate what what the period was, what each period was? No, because even like this doesn't necessarily mean that the first day was equal to the time from creation until uh, the, the, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we calculate it and we say that Adam was created, we said roughly 4,000 years before Christ. Um, so that means that the seventh day is about 4,000 years. But it does not necessarily mean that the first day was 4,000 years. It could have been a million years, like we said, right? That's why, you know, people who try to um, use science to disprove the Bible and things like that, they will come and they say, well, look, the dinosaurs were million, millions of years ago. Okay, what's the problem with that? Even when, when God created the animals, it, he did not say that he created all of them at the same time, right? He could have created the dinosaurs, and then a million years later, he created the rest of the animals. Okay? Okay. So, again, we, you know, we are trying to use our, you know, limited knowledge 
to explain things that are beyond us. If you look at a circle, like if, if we look at um, you know, this, this circle here, okay? If we look at the circle, let's say that each one of these you know, ridges is a day. When we, as humans, we live day by day, right? So we, we go from this ridge to this ridge. That's one day, this is yesterday, this is today, and this is tomorrow, right? But if I look at it from above, like God does, I can see all of it at the same time. And this is what God sees because he's not under the dominion of time. So he can look and he can see the past, present, and the future all at the same time. Okay? Okay. Thank you. The fall of Adam and Eve, this is when sin and death entered into the world. Before the fall, there was no sin and there was no death. So Adam and Eve, if they did not sin, they could have possibly lived forever with God in, in the garden. Um, God made a covering for them to indicate that only through the blood of a substitute could they approach God. When, when they sinned, they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves, and God told them this doesn't work. And then he, he gave them like coats of skin. Where did he get this skin from? An animal. So God had to sacrifice an animal, an innocent animal that didn't do anything, and the animal could have stood up and said, God, why are you killing me? I didn't do anything. It was Adam and Eve. But God said, I know you must die in order for them to live. So this is what a sacrifice is. And so this is why when the, the children of Adam, Cain and Abel wanted to bring sacrifices, Abel understood because Adam, his father, told him when we sinned, God sacrificed an animal and he gave us his skin to be saved. So he learned that if I want to offer something, a sacrifice to God, I have to offer an animal. Cain, on the other hand, was like, I don't care what God wants. I'll do whatever I want. I don't want to offer a sacrifice. I don't want to get my hands dirty and bloody and it's a mess and who's going to clean it and it's going to smell. No, I'm going to go take some of the you know, vegetables and fruits and I'm going to offer that. But this is not the way that God wanted a sacrifice. And that's why the sacrifice of Cain was accepted but the sacrifice, sorry, the sacrifice of Abel was accepted because it was according to God's plan, but the sacrifice of Cain was not accepted. And so God pronounced a curse upon man, woman, and the serpent. And at that time, he also declared that the Messiah would come someday and crush the head of the serpent. And he told the woman what your, your offspring will crush its head. Now we understand why. Every woman in the Old Testament was waiting to have a son so that the, the Messiah can come from her son. That's why in the Old Testament, barren women, women who did not bear children, were considered cursed. Because if they cannot bear children, that means it's impossible for the Messiah to come from her offspring. And that's why we see people like Hannah. She was very uh, upset and she was very hurt. And she cried out to God because she didn't have any children because she was considered a curse. We see the same thing with um, uh, Elizabeth, no. right? Elizabeth cried out to God because she didn't have any children. Sarah also, Sarah, the, the wife of Abraham. So now we understand why in the Old Testament, every woman wanted to have a child because perhaps the savior would come from her offspring. The flood came upon the whole world and God saved Noah and his family. When we say here the whole world, this is another point that some of the people, they, you know, they, they debate um, in, with science and they say, how can the whole world be covered in water? And, uh, you know, scientifically it would be difficult and, 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 and. Here, God, the, the purpose of the flood was to destroy mankind. Humans were not living everywhere. There were no humans living in, in Antarctica, for example. There were no humans living in North America. There were no humans living in Australia. So there was no reason for God to destroy and, and flood those continents because there's nobody there. So when we say that God uh, you know, caused a flood upon the whole world, we're talking about the world that was populated by people. 
And then after the flood, uh, the, the other major event was the Tower of Babel, where people were rebellious. And so God babbled their tongue or confused their tongue. So Babel means to confuse. And he divided their language. So this is the, the, the birth of the different languages. So as they were trying to work and build this tower, you know, God came down, he confused their tongue. So one person was speaking Spanish, one person was speaking Arabic, one person was speaking Coptic. And so they couldn't understand each other. And so because they couldn't understand each other, they couldn't work, they couldn't continue the building. And so they separated from each other and they left the tower alone. The word Genesis means the beginning, in the beginning. Genesis is the beginning of the world, it's the beginning of man, and it's the beginning of the nation, the Hebrew people. God made the world and all that is in the world out of nothing. How? He spoke. He spoke his word. He said, let there be light. Okay, so he spoke his word. His word is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the word of God. So he spoke his word and everything came into existence out of nothing. This is creation. Creation is not taking something that already exists and building something else out of it. Like, for example, if I take a, a bunch of bricks and I build a house, is this creation? No, this is engineering. This is designing, but it's not creation. Because I took something that already exists and I'm building something out of it. Creation is there is nothing at all. There is no earth to begin with. And out of this nothingness, yeah. God creates the earth. This is creation. Adam and Eve, <clears throat> this is also the beginning of marriage. So Genesis 2, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This is Genesis, again, is the beginning of marriage. Eve was seduced by the serpent, who is Satan, or who was living inside of, uh, of the serpent, the one who rebelled against God before. So before Adam and Eve were created, the angels were created. And Satan was one of the archangels. He was one of them. He was actually the most powerful angel in heaven. And then he rebelled against God. And so God cast him out. And so he became Satan. He retained his power, so he's still very powerful, but now he's evil. So because he fell, he wanted to see man fall just like he did. It's like, if I go down, I'm taking everybody down with me, right? So he went to, the, to Eve and he told her, you will, sure, you will not surely die. So he lied to her because God told her, if you eat from this fruit, you will die. So the, 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 the serpent came and said, no, 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 you, God, God is not really serious about this. You will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of, of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. So I, 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 I have a question here. I want somebody to answer me. Was, were Adam and Eve already like God or not? Yes. Yeah, like yes. God. Yes. They were made like in his image. But exactly. not completely like God. Exactly. They were made in his image. So they were already like God, right? God created man in his own image. So here Satan is trying to tell them you'll be like God. But if, if Eve was wise, she would have said, I already am like God. I don't need to break his commandment to be like God. And how can I become like God if I disobey him? So here, you know, there's deception, of course, and there's, there's lying. That's why we call the devil the liar and the father of all lies. When they sinned, they, they, they um, underwent spiritual and physical death. Spiritual death by being separated from God and physical death that they actually died later on. And so this is how death entered into the world. Um, Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so St. Paul says in Ephesians 2 that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. So there became an enmity between God and man. That's why Adam hid, because he was afraid. He was afraid that God would punish him. And so there, there became an enmity between God and man. 
And so the Lord cast Adam and Eve from the garden away from the tree of life. So there were many trees in the garden. There was a, a, the, the tree of knowledge. That's the one that God told Adam and Eve, you shall not eat from it, or on the day you will eat, you shall surely die. And there was another tree called the tree of life. Why did God cast Adam out away from the tree of life? If Adam, after he sinned and his nature became corrupt, if he ate from the tree of life, he would live forever in sin, in corruption, and he would not be saved. So when God cast Adam and Eve out, it wasn't because he was angry and because he, he wanted to punish them and kick them out and like say, go to your room. No, it was actually to protect Adam because if Adam ate from the tree of life, he would live forever, but he would live forever in sin and he would not have been uh, saved. The exact location of the Garden of Eden, it's impossible to know for sure. In the book of Genesis, it said that there, there were four rivers, um, uh, you know, like um, at, at, the, at the mouth or at the place of the Garden of Eden. Two of those rivers we know today, the Tigris and the Euphrates. The other two, Pishon and Gihon, we don't know exactly where, which rivers those are. And so nobody for certain can say, you know, the Garden of Eden is exactly in this place. But, you know, it's most likely in the area of Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, that area in the Middle East. The sons of Adam, Cain was the firstborn. And so because the Lord told Eve that your offspring shall crush the head of the serpent, Cain obviously thought that uh, sorry, Eve obviously thought that Cain would be the Messiah, the deliverer, the, the, the redeemer, um, the one who would destroy Satan. I told you last time that we, we see in the history that the firstborn is rejected and the second one is selected. And this is not that God is the one who, you know, makes the, the firstborn bad or he rejects them, but it so happens that the firstborn who is supposed to have the blessing, who's supposed to have, you know, the wisdom, usually goes against God. And so God chooses the second born. So Cain, the firstborn, killed his brother when God did not accept his sacrifice, which actually, if you think about it, doesn't make any sense, right? It, how would killing my brother make God happy and accept my sacrifice? Um, and so God punished him by driving him out, um, out, out of the midst of people. And so God gave Adam and Eve a replacement, another son, who Seth, he replaced Abel, and the Redeemer came from the family of Seth. Okay. Cain's family continued to be evil. So the, the, like father, like son. So his son, Lamech, inherited the evilness of Cain, and he rejected God's standard for marriage and took many wives. When God created Adam, he created Eve for him. He did not create Eve and Sarah and Elizabeth and Mary. He only created one, Eve, Adam and Eve. But just like Cain said, I don't have to do what God wants. I'll do whatever I want. So the same thing, Lamech, his son, said the same thing. I don't have to do what God wants. I'll do whatever I want. So he married many wives. And just like his father who killed his brother, he also killed a man and didn't care. And he said, for I killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. And then he, he started to boast that he's strong and he can kill and nobody can defeat him. And he said, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy sevenfold. And so evil spread to all mankind through the line of Cain. We have in the Bible, people who are called the giants. We, we see this, um, this reference a few times. Um, who are the giants? The giants are the offspring of Seth and Cain. So in Genesis six, the sons of God, the sons of God here are the sons of Seth. Seth is the righteous one. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Who are the daughters of men? The daughters of men are the daughters or the offspring of Cain, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. 
these were the giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards when the sons of God, etc. Noah, we're going to talk about Noah next. His wife was actually a mix of these giants. And so um, she is a descendant of Cain or a mixed descendant of Cain. So even this, this mixing, you know, influenced everybody, even righteous people like Noah, who married uh, somebody who was a mix between good and evil. Of course, because Noah was righteous, he led his wife to be righteous like him, um, and, and, and God was pleased with, with them. Okay. Um, we'll take a few more things, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stop. We'll talk about the great flood. As we said that the earth had become co completely corrupt, and so God sent the flood to punish um, all mankind. Um, but he reserved, preserved the lives of Noah and his family, as well as two of every kind of living creature. So how many people entered the ark? Noah had three sons, and each one of them had a wife. And Noah and his wife, so that's eight people. Eight humans entered um, the ark plus two of every kind. So like two tigers, two uh, cats, two dogs, two uh, foxes, two of every kind so that when they go back after the flood is over, um, they can populate the earth. You know, each, like, uh, each animal can have offsprings and they can uh, populate the earth. It's estimated that there was room in the earth for 7,000 species of animals. This is a nice picture I, I found. Um, so it shows you kind of the levels of the ark. So here at the bottom, you had uh, like the, um, uh, the, the animal storage. That's where the animals lived. You see here some elephants and giraffes and whatnot. And then the level above it, deck two, this is where they stored the food. And then level one or deck one, this is where um, they stored the birds and then also the, the humans, they lived uh, in, in level one. Okay, so this is the ark. God told him, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. And then he gave him the dimensions exactly of how to make the ark. Um, After the flood, um, four things happened. Be enmity developed between man and animals. So the fear of man uh, fell on animals. And man was permitted to eat animals for food. This is the very first time that, that God allowed man to eat food, uh, to eat an, uh, like meat. And why did he allow that? Before the flood, people lived for a very, very long time like you know, 900 years, 700 years, things like that. When God allowed man to eat animals or to eat meat, this actually reduced the lifespan of man to 120 years. So that's why we say when you're, when you're fasting, you're more healthy. This is true. When you eat meat, actually your, your, your body works uh, harder and it becomes more difficult. And so you know, you, you don't live as long. So people who are like vegetarians or vegans or who are fasting, uh, like monks in the desert and things like that, they, yeah, they, they can live 100 years, 120 years. But most people in the world, they live maybe 80 years, 90 years, if they're lucky. Um, God commanded th the death penalty for murder. And as I said, the lifespans were decreased to 120 years. Um, I'll stop here. And we can continue this next time, um, the, the uh, sons of Noah. Um, so we will play uh, the game. Okay. Um, if you go to Kahoot, let me bring it up. Any questions about the, the material before we start the game? I do. Um, yes, go I ahead. Have a real quick. So, um, how many years did it take them to build the ark? It took uh, 40 years to build the ark. That's a good question. 
So it took 40 years. Why, why did it take that long? You know, couldn't God have like, you know, uh, he could have just wished it and the ark would have been created, right? Why did he uh, tell uh, Noah to build it for 40 years? Because during those 40 years, Noah was preaching to the people and he was telling them, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And they didn't listen to him. So even, even after God pronounced the judgment, he was still giving uh, people a chance to repent. Any other questions? Is not oh, 120. Like, oh, I mean. Is it that 120? I thought it's 40, but we, I, can, I can double check. I thought it was 40 years. But 120 maybe, years. Maybe 120 years. years. Okay, 120 years. I thought it was 40 years. We'll, we'll, we'll check it and, and uh, make sure uh, for next time. Any, any other questions? I do. Um, oh, the dinosaurs the, um, what, one person at a time. Uh, go, uh, Mina, can you wait? Go ahead. Who was talking? Um, were the dinosaurs in the ark that time? No. The dinosaurs had already been dead before man started to, um, to, to really live on the earth. So they, they, they weren't in the ark. Mina? Our Greg is adding, oh, one thing I want to add really quick is the reason why God created the, uh, the tree of knowledge and, and the tree of, uh, of life, God actually gave, gave Adam and Eve a choice of whether to, of whether to obey or, or disobey uh, his commandment, and, and they chose actually to, to disobey. So, yes. Yes, that's right. And he gave them a choice and, and they, they chose, you know, to disobey God. And that's why, you know, God was, was just in his, um, you know, in his pronouncement of the judgment because they had a choice, but they, they decided not to. All right, great. So let's start the game.